Okay, are you a normal Christian or are you kind of someone who preaches Christianity to other individuals or yeah. oh, how how would you classify yourself? A preacher, yeah? Yeah, 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 I would say so. Okay. So like how do you great commission that Jesus commanded his disciples? Okay. So baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. Not the Father, Son, so that's not the the great commission then. No, actually it is like uh I I actually saw this yesterday. So, um, the his followers, the disciples, when they baptize people, they baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. The fact that they baptize in the name of Jesus shows that this verse is is dodgy. This verse, because if he did command them to do that, they wouldn't go against his command. So the, the, I don't accept this whole idea of the Great Commission to begin with. Okay, because but, because you cannot take a part of it and leave the other part. Uh, you're taking a part of the verse where he says go and uh, baptize, and you're leaving the other verse, the end of the verse where he says in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. No, the Great Commission is go and preach the gospel to every creature that's which verse are you referring to i'll tell you hold on okay mark 16 15 and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature on the okay are you aware that the earliest manuscripts do not have this verse that you just quoted the what the earliest manuscripts uh, of the bible okay do not contain verses 9 to 20. where are you getting that from i'm getting that from the niv you, okay um well usually like it's it's said to be like if you're gonna use the english version um majority of you know bible believing christians tend to use the king james version the, some manuscripts have the following ending between verse 8 and 9 and one manuscript has it after verse 8 omitting verses 9 to 20. And then they quickly reported all these instructions to the, those around P peter after this jesus also went through etc etc so it says here the earliest manuscripts and some other asian witnesses do not have verse 9 to, to 20. this is by the way it's not me it's a christian <laughs> As in what? Going, going. NIV, NIV. If you open the NIV now, you just Google the NIV, Mark chapter 16, and you read, it says on the top after verse 8 that verse 9 to 20 does not exist in the Ellis manuscript. So, but yeah, but that's NIV. I'm talking about so NIV is the, what? Is not the Bible? <laughs> it's not acceptable? No, Why I, is it? I, no, I know. I, I understand, but like I said, like King James Version is for English speakers. That's King James Version is, is has great defects, and it, it does not rely on the most and on the most early manuscripts. That's why you had the RSV, which says in, in its introduction that the the, the the King James Version has grave defects. You're you're using a version that doesn't have that verse, but I'm trying to give you the verse from the King James Version. But you're you're saying okay th that's good that's great let's let's have this discussion and let's talk about this you believe in the bible which bible is from god which bible the bible is from god the, the bible is which the one because i was just brought you have a bible that contradicts what you said and you said you don't accept it you went to the King i mean i didn't version. i didn't pull up the niv so i don't know go like, ahead now can do it now okay and that that's a later version right niv is a later version you mean after the king james yeah of course it's after the king james yeah okay so then if it was if we're if we're going and the rsv as well because it's a revised version so it's revising the earliest versions and after discovery of, of future manuscripts which mm -hmm. people did not know in the past then they correct the mistakes that existed in the earliest scriptures like the king james version so the fact that it's new it's a good thing not a bad thing you can't no, say you know, no. it's a bad thing no, it's actually it's actually a good thing because you discover like earliest manuscripts that sounds like corruption right because you exactly because the bible is corrupted i agree no no but you're saying why are we not using the newer versions than the older versions to try and prove, prove your point but i'm i'm not saying that no 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 I, let me repeat what i said i'm saying the newer versions are better but you said because, no i'm saying they're better why are they better because the, after the discovery of new manuscripts you can then correct this is what i was saying now so you can then correct the things which are added later on so if i go back to let's say the first hundred years which you don't have anything from that time let's, let's say assume assume that you had something from the first hundred years if we have a lot of manuscripts from the first hundred years none of them contain verses 9 to 20 that shows that this was added later on so us today having you or, or christian having new versions today is better than the older versions because you discovered new manuscripts which therefore can help you figure out what is was interpolation and what wasn't how are the, the new, how are the new manuscripts um like how you're saying if you discover new manuscripts how are they comparing them so they discover manuscripts written manuscripts by scribes in different locations around, around the world of the gospel of mark these manuscripts do not contain verse 9 to 20. so they find gospels of mark written by scribes very early in different localities of the world but they don't contain verse 9 to 20 which means that historically someone later on added verses 9 to 20. you don't know how textual criticism works 
No, I don't know what you're, what you're trying to say, man. I don't, you're, you're basically, why, why is he, why is he, <laughs> I think I'm speaking very simply. Like you're basically saying the, so how did it get added in the first place? Some scribe somewhere in the world added the verse into the Bible and then people started reading that verse thinking it is from God. Simple. So you had scribes in different localities in the world and those scribes would add notes, would add their own interpolation sometimes, would add interpretation, would add different things into the Bible. It's a well-established thing. I, I don't know. Like, have you read any book on, on textual criticism? No. See, this is this is how actually you authenticate scripture. So you, to how it's translated from, you know, different languages and, and whatnot, right? And no. Then, when you when you find the when you go back in time and you find older scriptures, you'll compare and see how authentic is this that we find, like for example, the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Old Testament and what we and they compare it to what they have today. And if it lines up, then they're like, okay, it's more reliable. Isn't that what I said? <laughs> okay. the of the, the, we agree, I, right? it, uh, no, no, but you just look, you just repeated what I said in a different way. But the point is, if you discover uh, earliest manuscripts, sh uh, quote unquote, like the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is what you said, and then you compare it to what you have today, and this scrolls does not have some of what you have today that shows that th these things that you have today goes against the earliest manuscripts, which means it was added later on. So Mark, which is what you quoted, right. uh, verses 9 to 20, is that which was added later on, according to Christian scholars like the RSV, the NIV, or other versions, they clearly stipulate that this does not exist in the earliest manuscript which means by default it was added by someone because those people who were writing mark in the early days they could not have just missed this part all of them in all of these different manuscripts that means someone later on have added that into the bible so i'm, I'm glad you quoted that part because that part is an interpolation into the bible as many other parts of the bible what can i call you lando yeah lando yeah okay so lando why do you believe in a scripture which is corrupted why do you think it's corrupted we're just discussing that right now E, okay, is okay, hold on. Uh, so the earlier you were, you were referring to Matthew 28? No, I just referred to Mark chapter 16. What you, what you, yeah, yeah, quoted, but like you said, go out into all the world and preach the gospel. No, yeah, the other one you're quoting now, the other great commission. Yes, this is what people call genuinely. Generally, this is what, pe what people call, which has the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But what you quoted, a lot of people don't quote because it's a fabrication, clearly. That's why they don't quote it. That's why many preachers do not preach this one. They go to the other one in Matthew, which is also problematic, <laughs> as I was mentioning, why it was problematic. Is that the disciples did not baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They just did it in the name of Jesus. And if this was a command given to the disciples, they would have followed the command of Jesus. But the point is, the Bible has so many verses like this, which I can quote to you, many, many verses like this, that did not exist in the earliest manuscript, that are only in the King James Version, which shows corruption that the scribes have played with the manuscripts, have added things into the scripture, and people have believed in them, like yourself, following them, thinking that they are from God. Okay, but in Matthew, is, is the, he still sends out his disciples, right? But that is the point I was making, is that part, I don't accept it to be reliable, as if as you would see many Christian scholars, if you investigate this point, why do they say that? Because they say disciples, not all of them are going to go against the command of Jesus. That does, that does not make any sense. He said to them, do this, and they were going to do and do something else. Well, it's so what I researched yesterday is that when um, Jesus says, like, uh, go in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and then when they baptize in Jesus name, that is fulfilling what he said because we believe in the trinity right no it's not fulfilling what he said if he said baptized in the name of the father son and the holy spirit the father is not the son and the son is not the holy spirit so by just mentioning one person of the trinity it does not mean that you mention the other two persons of the trinity you're just mentioning one so if jesus commanded you to mention the three which i don't believe he did then you would have to mention the three persons because they're different they're not the same the father is not the son and the son is not the holy spirit do you agree well it, it uh well do you disagree <laughs> no 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 so, so i know like it's it as they as you know like, look look land come to islam man look islam is very simple oh, it's easy look, the scripture is not corrupted <laughs> okay um sorry why should i come to islam why what makes muhammad a prophet that's a great question. Look, Lando, let me let me give you a case. Let me explain one thing to you. Yeah. All the prophets throughout time, this is what Muslims believe, and this is what, what factually used to happen. All of the prophets used to come to their people with one message. That message was worship God alone, do not worship anyone, do not associate anyone with God. So Jesus, when he was asked what was the greatest command, he said that you should not worship other gods, only one God, God is a jealous God. So worshiping one God or him saying to the children of Israel, here or Israel, our Lord God is one God, is the same message that all the prophets and messengers came with. None of the pro prophets and messengers came with this idea 
idea of that there is a trinity there's something called the father son and the holy spirit and worship them and follow them even jesus himself never said that anywhere in the bible where he said to his disciples god is a trinity believe in the trinity and follow the trinity not the word he didn't say father son or, or holy spirit are three persons in one never never did he say that he only said worship the father he didn't even say worship him so all the prophets came with this idea worshiping one god alone all of a sudden you know he all of a sudden Multiple times. I'll let you come in. I'll let you come in. I'm just going to give you this case and then I'll let you come in. All of a sudden in Christian history, after Jesus ascended, what happened is the Roman Empire adopted Christianity. And the Roman Empire had this idea of sons of God, daughters of God, fathers of God, and all of this nonsense. And they had the Greek mythology. So they introduced it into Christianity. And they have introduced this concept, this weird concept called the concept of the Trinity. That's what you can see in the Council of Nicaea. They were debating the, uh, the divinity, the equality of Jesus with the Father. Then you see in the Council of Constantinople 381, where they added the Holy Spirit as an entity three of them being co-equal co-eternal before that in history in the first 300 years you're not going to find any manuscript or anything that says that these are that these three are three uh co-equal co-eternal entities that make one god so what does islam do? do allah sent another prophet another messenger after the ascension of jesus and after people have corrupted the message of jesus the pure me message of monotheism worshiping one god alone allah sent another prophet another messenger to bring people back to the light to bring people back to monotheism prophet muhammad came with the same message as jesus worship one god alone be good to your neighbor do not kill do not rape do not steal he brought a scripture just like moses brought a scripture just like jesus brought a scripture just like all of them brought a scripture from god prophet muhammad he did the same thing he brought a scripture from God calling people back to monotheism saying to them that this idea of the Trinity is wrong Jesus was a messenger of God he was pure he was born miraculously his mother was a righteous woman but he was not God there is no such thing as the Trinity and the scriptures have been changed which is what the Quran says which is what we can see with our own eyes when you demonstrated like Mark chapter 16 as, as well as many other verses if you look at my videos I quote many verses that have been added on later on so you're asking why should you should you accept Prophet Muhammad because you believe in God and Prophet Muhammad came with the same message as all the prophets and the messengers came with to worship on God alone and his life was that teaching people to stay away from idols not to worship anything other than God to be good to the people and a false messenger would not be doing that he'll be looking for his own gain he'll be looking for his own things rather than calling people to worship God and believe in Jesus and believe in Moses and Abraham and all of the prophets and messengers of God and their message that's why you should be a Muslim okay but a, a lot of what you said is false uh in Tell me okay go ahead terms of what the Bible says and what the Bible claims but we just agreed that the Bible is not fully trustable anyways historically it's not historically reliable due to th certain things being added in and out and by the way that's not just my opinion this is a Christian scholarship you can read Brutes Mesker what, uh, what did he say about that Bart Ehrman what did he say about these are Christian people that did study uh, textual criticism some of them even left Christianity after studying textual criticism due to the problems that they saw Bart Ehrman he said there are there are contradictions in the Bible as as many as the letters in the Bible from the amount of contradictions that hasn't the error in the manuscripts of the Bible there are so many contradictions and errors and that's why every version that you open you've got different things this oh every Christian says this is my version and I prefer this version because the other version does not have the same information as the one you're reading so the point is very simple look you are saying these things contradict the Bible nothing contradicts the Bible that there is one God worthy of worship well, how does that contradict the, the Bible that yeah. God sent the, the God sent prophets and messages calling to worship him alone this is what I was telling you how does that contradict the Bible are you you're asking me yeah yeah, yeah because you said what well, I would say contradicts the Bible how does uh, prophet saying to worship one God alone you're saying is not what the Bible taught. The Bible didn't teach you worship on God alone. In Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Hero, oh. hero Israel, our Lord God is one God. The Bible taught that Jesus is God. And you're saying... Where, where is that? Everywhere. Go ahead, show me. Okay. Are you familiar with the... Um, with the burning bush? The story of Moses meeting... Go ahead. Go ahead. Bush, right? Well, Jesus didn't exist yet. Yes, go ahead. Okay, yeah. Jesus did not exist yet, right? Yeah. So... That. hold on let's bring it up you're saying look look let's let's leave the old let's leave the old testament because your claim was i'll tell you why because your claim your claim was that jesus throughout the bible was saying it now you're going somewhere else before jesus was walking on the earth when he was when he was walking on the earth he 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 it, but did he teach did he teach the people himself let, let me ask you this lando when he was walking on earth yeah did he teach the pe people he was god himself yes where all right all right okay so what because this is the point of contention you can go to the old testament and try to interpret something into your understanding but that's not what we want if he came to be claimed to be god as you claim if he, this was his mission yeah go ahead. then he would say it but i'm i'm trying to show you that yeah go ahead go ahead no i'm just clarifying the point that's it okay so exodus chapter three again he came to the old testament again okay i know what, what you want 316 is what you want uh hold on no which which verse do you want then all right, hold up. You want the I am one. All right, first, 
Yes. Yeah. I know what you, I, that's what I just said to you. You know, I yeah, know where 16? you're going. You know, that's not 16. 14, is it? Which one is it? Yeah, it's 14. Yeah, okay. So if we read from, all right, all right. So let's, all right. So let's look at that, right? So let's look at that. So in uh, verse six, so moreover, he said, so this is God appearing to Moses as in the burning bush. He said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. So the burning bush, that's aware, God, right? So now if we fast forward. The burning bush is where he sp God spoke to Moses. It's not God. The bush is not God, but I understand what you're saying. Yes. Why, why not? Okay. It's, it's in, okay. So in verse four, and the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God called him out of the midst of the, of the bush. So God spoke to him from the bush. If a voice, Literally. if your voice, if I'm talking to you right now, your voice is coming from the computer. Are you the computer? No. Okay. So, so sound coming from somewhere does not necessitate that that thing is God. Just because okay. God is using something to communicate right. does not mean that a bush is literally God. But look, okay. this is not but our point of, this is, this is irrelevant, isn't it? It's not the point you're trying to make. No, no, no. Make I'm just point. Saying, okay. Yeah. So yeah. All right. So he's revealing to set himself as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, right? The prophets that you claim to believe in, right? So then in verse 14, uh, oh no, mean. verse 13, and Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel. I am. I am, I am. Okay. Is, so God is saying that his name okay, okay, is just, I step, am, right? Step by step. No, 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 I disagree. That's a Christian translation. Mm, okay. Wait, what do you mean? It says in, it says in Hebrew, Hey, can be translated in many, many ways. And the Jews don't agree that it means I am that I am, but let's accept your interpretation. Let's move on. You know what? I'll just, for the sake of, of being nice, I'll accept your interpretation. Go ahead. Because I know your claim. Go ahead. Yeah, of course you do. Of course. So let's yes. go fast forward to the new Testament, right? So okay. go. Yes. Yes. I'll help you. It's John chapter eight. John chapter eight. Okay. Yes. In the end of John chapter eight is what you're looking for. 58 specifically, if you need the number. Yeah. 58. Yeah. Okay. This is what you want, right? Right. Right. Yes. 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 Okay. okay go ahead. Say it. Or should I, I say, I know, I know it says, so you go ahead. Yeah. Right. So let's, let's start from, uh, let's start from 53. Uh, 52. Yes. Okay. He said to the Jews, no, no, the, 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 uh, he spoke about Abraham and then the Jews told him, how do you know about Abraham? You're not even 50 years old. Go ahead, read, no, read, read. I, I, well, read, 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 one. So no, very, read, 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 from whatever you want. Go ahead. Yes. If man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Uh -huh. Said the Jews unto him, now we know that thou hast a devil. Okay. Abraham dead, and thou prophets, and thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Mm -hmm. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead. Whom makest thou? Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me and whom ye say that he is your God. Ye, yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And I should say, I know him not. I should be a liar unto you, but I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. So now we could, we could pause here and go back to what he's talking about in the first Testament when Abraham actually spoke with God. So we could do that. When he, when he says Abraham rejoiced to say, to see my day, that has nothing to do with Abraham speaking to God. I don't know how you linked it. No, no, that, that's where you're going. Like, wrong, okay, we, go ahead. Right? If we finish, then said the Jews unto him, thou art not 50 day, years old and hast yes. seen Abraham. Yes. He's is answering them before barely, Abraham was. I am barely, barely. I say unto you before Abraham was, I am. Thank so, you very much. And so he said, they're asking him, have you seen Abraham? And he is saying, what? You tell me you're, you're the one who's making the he argument, right? Go ahead. Seen Abraham because God did visit Abraham, the angel of the so, Lord. Why, why is it explained to me now step by step? Because look, whatever interpretation you're going to give, trust me, is not going to help you. Now, you tell me when he says before Abraham was, I am, what did he mean by these words? He said before Abraham was born. No problem. Let's use the same thing. Before Abraham was or Abraham was born is the same meaning, but we'll use the one you want. Before Abraham was born, I am. So it means to me the, the title that God revealed himself to Moses. When he so, so I am is the name of God is what you're saying. That is according how to Exodus, according to Exodus is the name that God uh, told 
um, Moses to tell the... the yes, I'm, I'm just confirming. So you're saying I am is the name of God or a title of God or whatever it is. That's how he revealed him, his, yes. one, one of his names. No problem. Okay, so is that your claim or no? Or just what God says? <laughs> Bible says that's what God says, right? Yes, that's yes, because we're here investigating the claim that Jesus claimed to be God. So your claim is using this verse. Mm -hmm. God said his name is I am. Right. And Jesus here is saying I am. So he's referring to the name of God. So he's claiming to be God. That's what you're saying. Yes. That's okay. What, yeah. now, now, okay. So I am is God. So what I'm going to do now, I will show you how that verse completely shatters your claim. Why? Before Abraham was born, God. How is that him claiming to be God? Because that's who he's saying he is. He didn't say I am, I am. <laughs> he said, before Abraham was, I am. If we replace the word I am, according to you, is the name of God. So then the verse will be, before Abraham was, God. So which would mean, for anyone who has a bit of comprehension skills, it would mean that he's saying that God always existed. It makes complete sense that God can tell me about Abraham. You ask me what he meant by that verse, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. So if he's saying to the Jews, God existed before Abraham, before everyone, and based on that, God can tell me about Abraham and can tell me about him rejoicing to see my day. So if God reveals that to me, there's no problem. But you're claiming he is saying he is God using that verse and using your uh, understanding does not help you because all is the verse is saying now if we replace i am as the name of god we replace it with the word god before abraham was born god that doesn't mean he's claiming to be god what are the jews asking him the jews are asking him how do you know about abraham and he is responding by saying have you seen abraham not how do you know about him have you seen him look when they say to him have, are you you're not 50 years old what they're trying to say You've not met him. There's no not... way that you met him. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what I just said. <laughs> look, look, uh, Lando, look. They're I just saying to him, look, I... they're saying to him, Lando, you didn't live long enough. You did not exist in the past. You did not live long enough to meet Abraham. And how, and how does he answer them? He answered them, but that God was there in the beginning. Therefore, God can tell me about Abraham. Oh, he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, before yes. Abraham was, I huh? am. Before Abraham was God. That doesn't that makes that sentence doesn't even make sense what you're trying to you say. You just said you just said I am is the name of God. I'm just using your understanding. No, all I'm doing no. all I'm doing <laughs> so so look, yeah. you're not being sincere, Lando. I'll I'll be honest no. with you, you're not being sincere with yourself. No. Because you claimed and okay. I, I did confirm that with you before give the explanation because this okay. was your claim. You claimed I am is a name of God. So if it's a name of God or a title of God, I can replace it with another name or a title of God, like God. So if I am is God, I will remove I am and put God. So before Abraham was God, does not support your... Unless he says, unless he says, before Abraham was, I am, I am. So I am God. I am that title. I am that name. But he didn't claim that. He said one I am, which is the name of God, as you claim. So all he's saying is before Abraham was. A bio, that's what that's what the Greek says. It's not doesn't necessarily say born because it says prim uh, Abraham genitai ego amy. This is literally what it says in the Greek. Before Abraham existed or generated, was I am was God. So before before Abraham was God, and Why you can easily. Why did he say that? I just told you because no, no, he is why, saying to them. Why did the Jews ask him if he's seen Abraham? Because he's telling them news about Abraham and according to them, he've not met Abraham yet. So, or, or he did not live in that time or he did not live enough to see Abraham. So how is he telling us news about Abraham? And he's explaining to them no, that I don't need to be. I'm not news that he has seen with his eyes. No, no. He didn't say I saw Abraham. What are you talking about? <laughs> he said Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Is it Abraham? So not me. Look, Read. Look, look, look. They said, what did they say? They said in verse, um, um, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. That's what he said. Then said the Jews unto him. No, no. What did he say to the Jews? Thou art not yet 50 years old. No, no, before that, what did he say for them to ask that question? What did he say? He said, your father, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he so, he, so he didn't say I saw Abraham. Where did you he get did. there? Where, where? <laughs> your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Who rejoiced? He... Abraham or Jesus? Wait, what was your question? Who saw whose day? Abraham saw God. Saw Jesus' day? Yes. Okay, so it's not that Jesus saw Abraham. You're, you're confusing the two. You just claim that Jesus saw Abraham. That Jesus is claiming to see Abraham. Nowhere in that verse, nowhere in that chapter is Jesus saying, I saw Abraham. All is he saying, <laughs> Abraham, I don't know uh, like what you're laughing at, but honestly, you just, uh, by the way, when I upload this video, the, the scripture will be on the screen, which will show that you're just laughing at yourself with all the respect. Because nowhere, nowhere in that chapter did he say, I saw Abraham. All he said is that Abraham rejoiced to see my day. That's all what he that said. Mean? 
that mean? Okay, look, what what does that mean? This is interpretation stuff. I'm not I'm no. not getting into it. You <laughs> you claimed you claimed you will show. Now you're you're coming to a verse in the Bible somewhere saying explain it to me. That's irrelevant. You, you are claiming following. look, Lando, Lando, let's not let's try to le let each other speak. You asked okay. me a question. You said to me, what does it mean? It's very simple. You claimed you will show us Jesus clearly Jesus is, in, is God in the Bible, all of this stuff. You said you will show us. Then you brought this verse, which I already know, as I said to you. And then that verse does not help you in any way, shape or form. And I explained to you why it doesn't help you, because if I am was the title of God, then all he said is that before Ab uh, Abraham was God and nowhere there does he say, I am God, worship me. I, I uh, live for eternity and I saw Abraham and I created you all. Nowhere does he say any of that. You, just because you're a Christian and you already believe it, you're trying to add your interpretation into the verse. That doesn't help you. Honestly, anyone objective lo looking at this discussion that I'm having with you right now, no one will read this verse and say, okay, Jesus is God. No one will do that. You with all due respect, you have to be a Christian and you have to already put your belief into the Bible in order for you to see it that way. That's the only way. And I do, I do honestly hope that you become sincere with yourself regarding this issue, Lando, because look, this is afterlife. And look, uh, it's not about me winning or you winning or a discussion or who. This is afterlife and where we will end up, where our families end up, or are we going to end up in hellfire or heaven? My right. advice to you is to actually do a bit of more research on this topic, Lando. Investigate what I said. Go back when I upload this video. Watch. I'll, I'll let you. I will let you make a. I will let you make a, fi a final statement as well, because there are a lot of people in the backstage that they, they they should get time as well. You got almost one hour, right? Okay. So look, it's a very simple thing. This is afterlife. We need to be serious about afterlife. This is heaven or hell. Go back, watch this video, investigate, look at the answers I gave you, and look whether what you were saying made sense or not. Okay, go ahead. Okay, you're 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 pretty much running right now because you still have not answered my question. Why? I'm running. Okay, I'm, I'm running. I know you're. Why are the Jews asking Jesus if he saw Abraham? I already answered that. He was just telling them news of Abraham. And they said, you've not made Abraham. So where are you bringing this news about Abraham from? They're not saying anything about news. Look, he said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Is that information about Abraham or no? It, he's saying, rejoice to see my day as in me, God. Uh, you not answer my question. What? Jesus yes. saying, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Right. Is that him speaking on behalf of Abraham or no? On behalf of Abraham, yes. Okay, so then they said to him, how are you speaking on behalf of Abraham? Where did you get this information from? That Abraham rejoiced to see your day. Where do you get this information from? You've not lived 50 years. You've not seen Abraham. Where are you getting this information from? You're, you keep interpreting a simple verse. By the way, I'm not interpreting. Look, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's end it here. Look, go, go home. Open right. any, any biblical uh, interpretation explanation. It will say the same thing that I said to you. This is not a Muslim interpretation. It's a Christian clear understanding of the verse you perhaps you've not read any interpretation of the bible you've not read any exegesis on the bible from christian scholars or you would have said what i've said to you already because what i'm saying is not something that i made up anyways okay it was nice talking to you lando i'll let you go perhaps you can do what i said may allah guide you